Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike. We're back with another graphics tutorial video on Mobox. And this time we're gonna be doing the Netflix logo intro. And so let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm already in here in Illustrator and I just wanna show you how I made this text. So um, in case you kind of need to get this arc effect, um, you just come in and you find the text tool and you type something like, uh, like Mobox, highlight it, increase the size to your liking. And then you wanna go up to object, envelope, distort, make with warp. This will be set on arc. You wanna set it to, to lower arc and you wanna set the bend to a negative about 8%. And that's how you get that effect. And I just like to kind of bring it, like expand it from the top because it sometimes gets squished. And that's how you simply get this flat top and arced bottom. So let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects. All right, so here we are back in After Effects and I'm just gonna select this Netflix layer and drag it right in. For some reason it won't center, so I'm just gonna center it up and I'm just going to then scale it up. Um, I'm gonna press this little button here and that basically makes it continuously, uh, I guess, update and so I could zoom in and it doesn't, it, it makes, it keeps it as a vector layer. So. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually select this layer, go effect, generate, fill, and that red's fine, but I'm gonna change it to maybe a, a green color. I'm gonna set the transparency lower, and I'm going to lock it. Now there's a couple of things I could have done, right? So what I need to do actually is um, I need to break this up into its individual parts. And there's a couple ways I could do that. Um, but the easiest way is to just trace it, especially since there's not very many letters and there's a lot of straight um, sections. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna start by tracing over it. Oh, one thing to note, you wanna trace it out and break it up into the pieces that it's gonna be drawn out as. Also, if you hold shift, you could easily uh, drag it out onto the same plane. And so now we're ready to, to get started. You'll notice that it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be because because this bottom or this Netflix layer, you can now delete once you have it selected. Now, now basically now we just have the the tracing. So now for the kind of the, the grindy stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna select all these and I'm gonna change the color to like, uh, I don't know, Netflix red, which seems to be like a generic red. Let's. Let's see if I have a color picker here. We could just, all right, I'm gonna have to leave this on the second monitor, but you'll see the color that I'm choosing is that color. And that comes straight from the Netflix logo. You'll see that it's uh, it's not quite exactly like the logo because I have a, I'm using a different font, but, but that's totally okay. So I'm just gonna select these. That'll make this um, have some motion blur. And now I think we're ready to start animating. So I'm gonna start this at about one second. Um, this composition is only four seconds, which I think I'm gonna to change to maybe like six, just to be safe. Um, and then select all these layers, come down to the end and just extend them. So I'm gonna start at about one second and I'm gonna select all of these and you really you really need to know where you want your anchor point to be. So if it's drawing out this way, then you want this anchor point to be at the top of the shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move all of these anchor points to where I want the, the shape to scale from. Okay, so now all the anchor points are moved. Now I'm gonna check to, just to make sure that all the layers are, are in the correct order. Okay, they're all in order. Now I'm gonna start 
scaling these objects. So I'm gonna just select them all and hit S on the keyboard and start the scaling procedure. So since there's so many objects that need to be scaled, we only need to make it maybe 10 keyframes across. And I'm just gonna select this layer and uh, move this keyframe over, go back to one second and, s and make sure I uncheck. Actually, while they're all open, I think I could just select them all and uncheck. Well, you can't just uncheck this, this locking or this little chain link. And what that basically does is it delinks the X and Y scaling. So you could scale in one direction and not the other. So they're independent. <clears throat> so now what I wanna do is I wanna scale this up to zero. Um, but actually, I think I already messed up. I think that this, that this uh, point is supposed to be at the bottom. Uh, let's see if it's drawing. Yeah, so it's gonna draw up. And I'm just gonna kind of see when it gets to the top. Move this keyframe out to 10 frames. And so this one, I need to do zero, zero. Let's see what we get with that. It's not quite exactly what we want. So what we could actually do is we could change the path. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna set these back to 100. And I'm gonna search path. So I could set a path keyframe, move it over to 10 seconds. And basically just drag this all up to this top. Uh, make sure path is selected. That's what I wanted. So now you get that, that reveal. And you could actually do that for all of them. Um, scaling it is just a little bit easier because it's already done. Um, but again, you know, you could, there's many ways to do everything in this world, and this is just one of them. Okay, so I'm done all the keyframes. You can see that 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 they're not staggered completely evenly, but the reason is the reason being is that <clears throat> basically when this line here comes past this line, that's when I'm going to start this line, not when this line's all the way done. So that way it's a little bit quicker and it's a little bit smoother. And this letter always takes just as long as this letter, no matter how many pieces it has. So you could see we'll render it out and it looks pretty slow, and it also looks pretty kind of not very great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all the keyframes here, which there is a ton of them, and I'm gonna use my little tool over here to, to smooth out the motion. Um, again, this tool is, per you can purchase it at mountmograph.com. Um, it's called Motion2. I don't, I'm not sponsored by it. I just use it, it's the only tool I use, and it's totally worth, I think, like the 35 bucks that, it, that it's, that it cost. So alternatively, you can come into the graph editor and mess with these graphs. Obviously you see how complicated this is. I don't like to do that. So I skip that skip step and I just paid 30 bucks and I never have to deal with it ever again. So you can see that already it's, it's, you know, it's coming apart just like you'd expect. So the next step here is to add the, the shadows. Um, that's an effect that you barely see during during the the unveiling during in, on like the commercials and the low in the trailers and stuff. But there actually is some shadows. So we're gonna come in here and drop some shadows. Drop shadows, and I'm just gonna drag this on. So I need it on this piece of the end. Um, I'd have to 
kind of rewatch it to see all the pieces that it that it requires. Um, actually, it's not on this piece of the end. Um, it's on the center piece of the end. And the center piece of the end is actually on top of the other two, which is a bit strange. Um, but I'm just going to increase the softness. And you see that now it kind of looks like it's actually on top, which it is. So I'm just going to increase the opacity, increase the, the distance uh, to zero, and basically just copy this drop shadow effect and paste it onto, let's see, I need to paste it onto this one, this E, which I'm also going to drag to the top. Um, I'm going to drop it onto this part of the E, Control V. And so that letter's done. I think the top of the T, so I'm just gonna paste it onto the top of the T, drag this again on top of, of that T, whoop, too far. Um, this part of the F, I'm gonna drag this part of the F on top. Um, I'm just watching the trailer. Um, I could drop it on this part of the F. Uh, this part of the L, which since it's below, I'm gonna need to drag it on top. And I don't think it matters which, which part of the X, but I'm gonna put it on that one. So now you're already looking at something that looks significantly better than it did just a second ago. So, all right. So you could, you could have these, these shadows disappear if you'd like. I kind of like the shadows personally. Um, if you want the shadows to disappear, You'd have to come through on the keyframes and select all the layers and search for um, opacity. And you'd have to come and you'd have to set keyframes for each of the opacities for the effect. So effect, drop shadow, opacity, set keyframes. And you can do this. Um, I guess I could do it for the sake of this tutorial, um, but it, you know, obviously adds some extra time. Your effect, you may like the drop shadows. Um, I kind of do, to be completely honest. So, but I'm still going to do it just because uh, it's just for completeness. I'm a completionist. So obviously only the ones that, that are effect drop shadow need the keyframe. I think that's it. I'm just gonna select every layer and press U on the keyboard to get my keyframes. And now for the fun part. So I just like to line these up to I guess kind of the general area for when the effect starts or maybe even right in the middle of the effect. Do it wherever. Obviously, this isn't like a, you know, a science. It's just a thing that I'm that I'm doing here. So then you want to go to the end of each of each and bring the opacity to zero. And again, there's there's no real rhyme or reason for where each are kind of going to zero. I just kind of want them to be a balanced distance heading to zero. I kind of like when there's just long enough so you could see it, but then you could also see it as it disappears. That's kind of what I've noticed. I'm running out of, of space here. <laughs> Bring this one to zero. Ooh, it looks like some of these I didn't bring all the way to zero. Okay, there you have it. I just increased the, the opacity a tad um, just to make the effect a little bit stronger. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new composition, composition new. Oh, that looks good. Layer new solid, make it dark, almost black, not quite. I'm going to just drag comp one on. And so you'll see here that like the tops of these X's are actually uh, 
you are seen and it's because there are paths so I'm just gonna go clean those up what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take this and just trim this layer down um, because it doesn't start until this keyframe anyway so it almost doesn't even matter if it's if it's seen or not um, just because the points are just too hard to too hard to grab so now what I'm gonna do is it looks pretty good so far but to make it look even better I'm gonna right click go to time enable time remapping find where this starts which is right about there set a keyframe whoops set a keyframe and delete this original keyframe find where this ends and set another keyframe now what I could do is I could drag these keyframes closer and basically it speeds up the animation but what I could also do is I could select these and smooth them out too again using my tool or you can go into the graph editor and come to um, speed graph and edit it there again I hate using that so I'm not going to and now you can see what it looks like obviously that's too fast but you know you could augment this to your heart's content I'm just gonna keep messing with these until I kinda get something that I like so another another thing that they do is this N is drawn I'm just gonna set a P keyframe move it over I'm actually gonna move this into the center press you on the keyboard drag this keyframe towards the end here and add some motion alright so last step I'm just gonna scale this down layer new null object I'm just gonna parent it so that way I could move this down without messing up my keyframes and I'm just gonna type only on because that's what they do <laughs> uh, make this color white slightly off white change it to geomantis because that's the same font I'm using I think regular looks probably fine just bring the size down center up the keyframe or center up the uh, axis center the the text bring it on top and parent this position to the comp position so now it's following and now I can select all the layers press you on the keyboard bring this opacity T to the end make this zero so now as it moves over it kind of gets revealed um, and so now you wind up with something that looks just like that only on Netflix